females, obviously I'm not gonna expose anyone by name or anything so no one will feel hurt. But in all honesty, you will be amazed as, at what I read. Amazed. It, almost in a state of disbelief that I'm reading this, that this is happening to Muslims. Some calamities and disasters and all of them revolve around the issue of addiction. Addiction in the Muslim household. So, I decided to speak about them straightforward, in your face, kind of thing. So that we will be aware of them. And you all know that this is a manhaj from the manhaj of the Sahaba. Who knows the name of the Sahabi who used to always ask about the fitan and the evil that will come so he could be aware of it. Hudayfa ibn Yaman radiyallahu anhu ardah. He said the people used to ask the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam about good and I would ask him about the, the evil and the bad so that I may be aware of it. It's away from the ways of the Sahaba. Now it's not the, the normal standard procedure but it is there and we have to address these issues for the Muslims to be aware. So if I say something that you consider to be uh, X-rated or extreme, understand that there's a reason behind it, okay? And I apologize beforehand if you find it to be uh, repulsive or offensive or whatever. But honestly, I have to speak about these things. Don't worry, I'm not gonna show you anything, nor am I going to say anything too much, yani. Just so you will not, your mind will not go far away. When I say X-rated, it doesn't mean yani, what, what comes to mind. Allah understand. So the first among the addictions which are prevalent are things pertaining to sexual addictions. And on top of the list of sexual addictions is masturbation. And this is an issue which is common among men and women. And Allah alam, if I were to search on the Gmail, how many emails I've received with the keyword masturbation, they will probably be above three to four hundred. From young, uh, even not young, but mainly young men and women who are in this uh, predicament, disastrous predicament. Something that they have become so addicted to, there's, there's no way they can help themselves, even though there are many ways they can help themselves. The first thing we need to discuss is, this behavior or this act is haram. And don't listen to the fatawa which tell you that it is halal or that it is merely makruh. The reason why it is haram, because of textual evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah. Allah Azza wa Jal when praising the believer said, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِفُرُوجِهِمْ حَافِظُونَ إِلَّا عَلَىٰ أَزْوَاجِهِمْ أَوْ مَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ غَيْرُ مَلُومِينَ فَمَنِ ابْتَغَىٰ وَرَاءَ ذَٰلِكَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْعَدُونَ And this occurs in more than one surah in the Qur'an. And those who protect and guard their private parts, except when it comes to their spouses or their right hand possession. In regards to that, they are not blameworthy. However, whosoever seeks anything beyond that, and it is those who are the transgressors. And Allah says in the Quran, وَلْيَسْتَعْفِفِ الَّذِينَ لَا يَجِدُونَ نِكَاحًا حَتَّى يُغْنِيهُمْ, يغنيهم اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ And let those who cannot find, who are unable to get married, let them remain chaste until Allah provides them from His provision. Those who cannot get married, let them remain chaste until Allah provides for them so that they can get married. In the hadith of Ibn Mas'ud, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ya ma'ashar al-shabab, ya ma'ashar al-shabab, man istata'a minkum al-ba'ata fal yatazawwaj, fa innahu aghaddu lil-basar, wa ahsanu lil-farj, wa man lam yastata'a fa'alayhi bil-sawm, fa innahu lahu wijah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, young men, he was speaking to young men, he said, whoever is able among you to get married, get married. And who, because it is means for you to lower your gaze, and it is means for you to protect your private parts from anything which is harmful and sinful. And then he said, if you're unable to get married, upon you is fasting, because fasting will be a form of protection. Now look at the amazing scholarly analysis. When you combine the understanding of the ayah with the hadith, 
you will find that Allah said that anything besides the husband and besides the wife, spouse, huh, and the right hand possession is no good. Then the Prophet ﷺ, when the Shabab are unable to get married, we know that the Messenger of Allah, he was never given a choice between two things except that he chose the easiest, provided it was halal. Huh. Had masturbation been a valid option, which is easier, masturbation or fasting? Masturbation. masturbation. However, that was not offered as an option for anyone. Rather, fasting was offered as an option, therefore dismissing the idea of masturbation altogether. So there's no room for anyone to bring anything other than that. Thank you. And this issue is an epidemic. It's, it's something that we have to follow certain steps to rid ourselves from it. So we have to follow a bunch of steps to acquire the cure. The first of which is what? You. Fasting? Good. But let's go back. Why do you fast? Kutiba alaykum usiyamu kama kutiba ala ladina min kablikum laallakum. That's it. That is the answer. So you actually still gave us an answer indirectly. It's the taqwa. If we fear Allah, it will be tough to do it. If we do it, it doesn't mean that we don't fear Allah completely, but it means we have a serious deficiency in the fear of Allah. Why? Because the idea of fearing Allah entails identifying and recognizing and internalizing the greatness and the majesty of Allah, His comprehensive knowledge of everything, His observance of everything, His knowledge of everything, His control of everything, and we are being watched all the time. Alam ya'lam bi anna Allah yara. Do you not know? Did you not know that Allah sees? Wallahu bima ta'amaluna basir. Allah regarding everything you do is all seeing. So once you bring this to mind, you will be shy. That's the end result. If we allow the shaitan to cover that up and not think in this manner, then anything goes. In lam tastahi, fafal ma shi'it. Subhanallah, the, 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 the Islam, our religion, the Quran and the Sunnah, there's, there's such a perfect harmony in the teaching, that it's, it's an amazing thing. This is why the Messenger of Allah ﷺ said, if you don't have any shamefulness, any bashfulness, you will wind up doing whatever you want. He's not telling you to do it. But you will wind up doing anything that you want. Once you have shamefulness, specifically from Allah, then you will have a hard time doing it. So if we learn every time we're about to engage in a sin, any sin, specifically this one, that Allah is watching, then we will be able to leave it alone. If we don't have the fear of Allah, then it's easy to do anything. Number one. Number two, marriage. And this is a call to all the parents. And I feel with the youngsters who send these emails, and it's, it's agonizing to read the emails. Brother, I am 23 years old, and my parents do not allow me to get married until I become a professor. And however, there's this sister that I want, it's the same story over and over again. And because of that, they are resorting to masturbation, and then later on, zina, and then later on, homosexuality. You will be shocked at the things that happen when you become an obstacle in your children's marriage. Let them get married. Who told you that for you to get married, you have to be a graduate from some university? Where did that come from? From where in our deen does it in, entail that you have to do this? Nowhere. We all agree as parents that you don't want to marry, you don't want your, your, your son to marry anyone unless they're able to provide. Agreed. However, the scholars say if you got money, you are obliged to help your son get married and you spend on him until he can stand on his feet. Are you stacking up all this money in the bank? For who and for what? While you can, you can get him married in no time. And he will learn to take care of himself. He can get a part-time job while he's learning. There are ways. We have to make an effort. When it fails, alhamdulillah. The parent can also say, Wallahi, I tried. 
I was willing to give you my money and I was willing to help you out, but it doesn't seem that you'll be able to afford it. So you have to be patient. Even your son will say, Baba, I agree. But when you just don't understand, you're just blocking your mind that he has to finish until he gets married. You don't know what your son is doing behind your back or your daughter behind your back. They're not going to come and tell you. They will not tell you. Never. But what happens behind your back is disastrous. If you were to know, you would go crazy. I'm telling you now. I'm, I'm putting that, that card out. I'm telling you from what I've read. What winds up happening when you don't know. Much worse than having, let him, having them get married. So marriage is an ultimate solution, ultimate solution for this problem. And it addresses masturbation and zina at the same time. So parents, be flexible. Try to work it out. If it doesn't, at least you could say that you did something for your children. Thirdly, busy yourself with that which is good. If you don't busy yourself with that which is good, then you will easily fall into the sin over and over again because you have plenty of time on your hand. Fourthly, lower the gaze. When you see so many naked women, this will lead you at some point, you, your body will react a certain way and then you, you have to relieve yourself. But what led to that point is what you were looking at before, whether it is on TV, or it is on the internet, or it is the, in, in the actual streets, which you see all of the above. If we lower the gaze, and it's not mission impossible, it's not easy, it is not easy, 100% agreed, but it is doable. The first look, alhamdulillah, you're excused, and the first look is one second. Just in case someone you know, gave you that other fatwa, you know, they say it's a, it's a, it became a joke actually, that he kept looking at her for two minutes and said, it's the first look. How is that the first look, yeah, Captain? The first look is a, the accidental look. And the Prophet ﷺ called it accidental look. Yeah, and you're driving and a woman is, is you know, walking and the thing, you have no choice. She walked in front of you, you have to see, otherwise you run her over. And that look is accidental, after which, khalas, you're no longer looking. If you keep checking her out, you didn't do the job. And this is among the means which lead to this, uh, you know, secret habit. They call it the secret habit. Uh, fooling oneself that it is lesser than zina. That is this satanic fatwa. It is available in some cases. It is in some cases when the, the scholars say, if you go to this country and da 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 da, and you're about to fall into zina, then do this as opposed to falling into zina. But how often that happens? Rarely. What usually happens is, look, I'm in, I'm in a foreign country, or I'm in a place where I'm are surrounded with fitna, so for me to stay in a good condition, I just masturbate all the time so that I will not fall into zina. So I'm, so I'm saving myself from zina by doing this regularly. Where did you get this fatwa from? The scholars gave this fatwa to someone who's on the verge. He's in a situation where he has a woman there, or the, and the, or the lady with the man, and then khalas, this is the last resort. But you can't give this fatwa to yourself. Even in that predicament, you cannot. Let alone to make it a regular habit based on, I might fall into zina later on. Drop this. Drop this idea altogether. You cannot do this. You have to leave it alone. And be mindful of the health effects. And no, this is not criticizing people with glasses. But it gives you bad vision. Huh? Everybody with God's like, <clears throat> not me, brother. <laughs> Same here, don't worry. I'm just saying, that according to doctors, it gives you bad vision, it makes you weak, and it may affect your marital relationship in the future. This is where I cannot elaborate. But it will eventually ruin your marital relationship, very possibly that it will, because you get used to certain things which are abnormal. No strings attached. What happens is it's among them, and this is very common. It's among the main reasons why people abandon salah. And it happens to students who go to America or the UK or Canada or one of these countries. And they, you know, there's, they're, in the beginning they're excited about Islam and, and they tell you from here, no, inshallah, brother, I will be straightforward and I'm a good practicing Muslim and I will never go astray, which is amazing for someone to say this about himself. 
The Messenger of Allah وسلم, says, Oh Allah, the one who turns the hearts over, keep my heart firm on your religion. And uh, Mr. Uh, Ahmed nowadays tells you, La Abad, when I go there, I'm Sheikh Al Islam. Don't worry. How, where did you get this fatwa? Where did you get this guarantee that Allah will protect you and preserve you? That you will be, a, 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 they will remain on a straight path. When you travel, to countries of fitan, whether it is for education or otherwise, you're one of three people. Either you are uh, guided and you remain guided, it happens to many people. That noise, stop it please. Or you are, guide, you are misguided and Allah guides you over there, alhamdulillah, or you are guided and you will go astray. Can anyone stand and say, I will be the third? I will be the first, I'm sorry, or the second. Can anyone say, no way that I will be the one who's guided and Allah will misguide me? If you say so, then Allah says, Wala anfusakum. Don't, don't praise yourselves. No escape. So I'm saying this as a disclaimer, be careful of this fascination with, you know, the degrees from the West and so on and so forth, on the expense that you lose your religion. Because you go to this university, and I don't know how the situation is here, and I don't want to know actually. But you go and then you have ladies all over the place, or for the sisters, you have you know, men all over the place and it's a mixed environment and everybody's half naked. And then this will, now you're either zina or masturbation, so you choose masturbation. Salah time comes, you could, couldn't shower. And so you miss the salah. And then you couldn't shower later and you miss the salah. And then the lack of shower and it's too cold in that country, you, the shaitan will keep dragging you until you abandon salah. Because you can't pray in the state of Janaba. And you can't make wudu either, you have to make ghusl. So the shaitan will use this as means to make one lazy and they eventually reach a point where they're not, they cannot shower in, in, on campus. And so they say, I will wait till I go home to shower. He goes home tired, that day goes without salah. Then the next day and then the one after, then they abandon salah. Once they abandon salah, kiss them goodbye. Kiss their Islam goodbye it will eventually disappear and vanish. And as me and the brothers were discussing, the only thing he will keep is, I will not eat pig and I will not drink alcohol. As if this is Islam. He doesn't pray and he does riba and he falls into all kinds of sins. But brother, alhamdulillah, I, I never eat bacon. Is this going to take you to Jannah? Not eating bacon? In fact, it's allowed for you to eat bacon if you're about to die in the desert. And the only thing you found is a pig, it's halal for you to eat it then. This is not our deen. So it's one of the tricks of the shaitan and what leads to this disaster is masturbation. Uh, what we should do is make a lot of dua. And this is an element which we miss. You speak to any one of us who's falling into a sin and he will tell you, say, Akhi, you, know, you know this is wrong. He says, I know, Allah, yeah, brother, I've been trying and da da da. He tell you a long story. And sometimes you find that in the whole story of his effort, Making dua was not part of the process. Even though the first thing one should do is what? Make dua. Because if Allah willed, it will be done instantly. But where's the sincerity in making dua? So when we connect with Allah Azza wa Jal, we have a solution for all the problems. So you just make dua with the sunnah of raising the hands. What we said before is you don't raise your hands after salah. Raising your hands is a sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ in making dua. But don't make it a habit to do it after every salah you raise your hands make dua because the Messenger of Allah ﷺ never did that. Never raise his hand after any salah, whether voluntary or obligatory. So that's why we say it's not from the sunnah. Some people misunderstood that. So raise your hands and make dua. Oh Allah, I'm, I'm afflicted with this calamity. Oh Allah, save me and be sincere. Be sincere. One dua you make from, the, from your heart, Allah will accept and it's done. It's done. Or Allah may want to test you further. Or He want to see how patient you are. Or how persistent you are in dua. It doesn't have to be kun fayakun with you. It's according to Allah's time, not your time. Not when we want, when Allah wants. And Allah knows when. But our job is to make this particular dua. So make dua and repent to Allah Azza wa Jal from that. So this is a reminder for all of the brothers and sisters in Islam. Masturbation is a prohibited act in Islam that leads to the corruption of the physical being and the spiritual being. And there's no room for it. And don't let the shaitan continue to trick you for another three, four years until you find a wife or until the sister finds a husband. 
Because people before us survived without doing that. And you can survive and we can survive without doing that as well, inshaAllah ta'ala. Are you tired of all these annoying ads on YouTube? Are you worried that a haram video might pop up? Well, the One Islam TV app is here to solve these problems, inshallah. The One Islam TV app is 100% free of any ads and is safe to browse for your peace of mind. Watch or listen to lectures and lessons while you work, rest or drive with your device switched off. Watch videos on demand or download videos and watch offline. Watch hundreds of high-quality produced Islamic reminders, Qur'an learning videos, stories of the prophets, and so much more. Two to four new videos uploaded daily, insha'Allah. One Islam TV is 100% run and owned by Muslims, which means a small amount you pay for your subscription is a sadaqa jariya, continuous charity for you as we use the funds raised to continue producing more beneficial videos and reminders. Insha'Allah. The One Islam TV app is now available on Apple devices, Apple TV, Android devices, Android TV, Amazon Fire TV, and Roku. So you can watch on most devices and smart TVs. Download now for a free 7-day trial. May Allah reward you for supporting our work.